Welcome back. Welcome back. This is uh, another episode of Windy <laughs> Rivulet. Uh, this is our YouTube series where we've been leveling through. So there's some some weird things going on with the server right now. I have I don't know if it's uh, gonna slowly load in. If, as you see, there's just numbers, mostly just numbers showing up. Um, it looks like slowly some people's names are getting put in there. Like there's absolution, but uh, for the most part, we're just seeing numbers. You'll notice there's fish in my net. This is what happened. Obviously, you can see I found the rough, but this is what happened. I started a video, right? And uh, then I picked up my shovel and the game glitched and froze and I couldn't do anything. Um, I couldn't put the shovel away. I couldn't put, pick up any rods. And so I had to exit out and then exit back in. And I was going to keep going with the video, but when I exited back in, all my fish had disappeared. And so I thought there was something really bad going on. And so then I logged out, stopped the video, logged back in. The fish are back, but now everybody's names are gone in chat. So um, I am going to turn this order in real quick. So I got these two rough. It's 11 silver order. Um, it's fine. Not too bad. Uh, there's no other orders that we have gotten progress on. I'm actually going to go ahead and sell the fish that we have caught um, since I wasn't you weren't here for those fish uh, and plus because I'm nervous that fish might disappear again to be honest so um, now we just need to decide so here here's the deal where I caught the rough was in the pond area um, so in the two meter hole in the pond area I was using um, well if it's, as long as it's not messed up I can show you yeah I was just using worms with uh, pretty small hooks and then, uh, of course, we still have a uh, telescopic rod. Um, we're saving silver for uh, our feeder upgrade, our first feeder upgrade. So we really just want to try to get to a spot where we can catch um, pretty good fish, right? Let's let's go do this. The spot where we've been doing um, all of the gudgeon fishing. I'm curious if. Um, Hmm. I'm curious. Let's let's try that spot for uh, with pearl barley on the uh, feeders, and then we can fish. You know what I meant to do was buy some blood worms, but we'll just use maggots for now. We can also use our telescopic rod again. What I kind of feel like doing right now is just trying to find a good spot and catching a high quantity of fish if we can. Hopefully, some markers. Hopefully some markers. All right, so basically right here is uh, is where we typically are doing the um, catching all the bait fish. But I am thinking that it is possible that this spot might just be good in general. We'll see. And so what we want to do is decent size hooks with pearl barley on just kind of put them right in the water here and see what kind of fish we catch in this spot because if the bite if the bite volume is still really high on the float fishing here we can um, we can do that and then kind of go back and forth between, let's try it with maggots. And we'll go back down to about, let's try one meter. And let's see what happens. See how the bite volume is and what kind of fish we're catching. Catch a lot of small stuff on the float rod, which is fine. But hopefully the feeder rods might get some decent fish here on the pearl barley. We'll soon find out. That is a good sign how quickly the bite was. Oh. Bite, but the fish isn't there, I guess. Alright, 
now there's a fish on. Nope, just kidding. Drifting with the current, I guess. Well, that's disappointing. Oops. What is going on here? Get snibbles. <laughs> All right, we got to move spots. So it does look like this spot has a lot of the small species in it. Um, yeah, let's go back up to this, this location here. We were doing okay over here with, um, with the pearl barley. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can do that again today. Might not have been the fastest bite rate, but overall the fish quality was there.
maybe we'll do a little spin fishing here in a minute. While we're waiting on that beautiful sound of the feeder going off. So that's the only issue I have with this spot until we get the upgraded gear is it's pretty um, <laughs> it's pretty uh, pretty bad I mean pretty hard to reel in the real bream now if we can get a few of them in that'll definitely be good silver and everything but it might not be ideal for the size gear we have. Look, fishing's at See if this is a marker. If this is a marker, it'll show us what like the smallest marker size feels like on this line. I'm guessing it is, but yeah, it's not even a marker. Alright, hold on. It's not like we can cut up fish pieces, so we're kind of just spinning our wheels here, catching non-marker bream like this. I would love to be fishing for bream here, but I feel like we need to have slightly bigger gear. Okay, that's a marker. Hmm. We're just going to have a low... A low total um, number of markers, I suppose. Maybe it's worth it, though. Let's see. We'll give it a little bit longer. Let's see if we can get anything spinning. That would make it a little better here.
Wow. A 380 gram chub just put us in the red here. Common roach. We would actually rather catch that than the undersized bream. I mean, obviously. Uh, common roach here at Winding pays pretty decently. Now the nice thing here is we are leveling up spin fishing with decent bite rate right now, which to be fair, leveling up spin fishing does take a long time. So if you do find a spot where you can cast and catch a fish every cast or two, it's worth doing it. Even like in this situation, we're not getting markers. So it's just kind of, it's not going to help our silver intake, but getting those points in spin fishing is huge because you've got to go to what is it, 15% just to be able to um, use the spoons. And at future lakes, you know, spoons are so good um, that you definitely want to do that. What would be cool to see is this might be another roach. What would be cool to see is if we could, um, instead of finding a spot where we're only catching the big bream, Find a spot where there's some light bream and stuff mixed in, although maybe there is here. Maybe they just don't love pearl barley at winding. I'm not sure. feel like it threw me off the way this whole day started trying to make this video and uh, everything getting kind of getting bugged out and then coming back and the fish were gone and then coming back again and the fish were there restarting the video and now I'm only seeing numbers and chat for the most part it's just it's a weird one so far it's a weird day so far say that and this might actually be a oh that's a dace okay See how many uh, markers we have snuck in here. We'll get this fish in. So out of the bream we've caught just one marker. We would probably see the uh, number of markers increase once it is nighttime or later and early morning even. But I am tempted to take go back to that spot that I caught was catching the rough on before the video, um, the first video got, okay, holy cow. Yeah, okay, that was a pike. <sighs> so two things. It was a pike which cut the line because we don't have a steel leader on. 
That's A. B, it was too big. <laughs> it was a big bike. We were going to have a hard time getting that one in, even if it didn't cut the line. So, we may need to uh, look at the steel leaders again, I guess. Let's go set up at the pond. Let's actually spend a little bit of time at the end of the day here fishing the pond and see how see how it does. We should catch a lot more uh, crucians and gibbles, but I just think to be efficient at this level, we may be better off doing that. We're spending a lot of time reeling in undersized bream. Now, once we get the next upgrade in gear, which won't be that long. We're at 83 silver. I mean, you know, we've just got to sort of grind it out a couple of sessions and we'll have one upgraded feeder rod. But um, until then, you know, we might be better off, again, just continuing to try different spots to find something that's more of a... Um, even if the fish are worth a lot less individually, we can more efficiently bring those fish in with this gear. At least that's what I'm thinking. Now, we could try to fish the... We could try to fish the... Um, the pond. What's the smallest steel leader? Six kilos? So, you know, we could put a six kilo uh, steel leader on and then all it's going to do is protect us from pike. It's actually going to be too strong. It's only one silver. I guess we could try it. And we need to get that lure back, to be honest. Um, if I can remember which one it was. This one, I think. Or was it the four? I think it was the two. Let's look at um, let's look at some of these servers that are newer. Uh oh, now we're not getting records to load. I don't know what's happening today with this game. For some reason, it's just having a uh, a rough time at, uh, with it. Let's see. I think it was. I think it was this one. That looks like a fine lure either way. <laughs> so we'll just go with that. Oh, the other thing I was going to do is... Um, how cheap are bloodworms? Yeah, bloodworms are pretty cheap. Let's just get a couple bloodworms in case we want to test those out. And did we already check the cafe? So we could do Gibble, Crucian... Probably not going to catch gudgeon in the pond. And what I want to do here is that eventually, you know, the spot that we're going to be throwing everything here is basically the spot where we are um, 
trying to catch rough. So what I want to do is see how it does in this spot during the day. So we'll put one feeder there. The other spot that we uh, that I used to just catch tons of stuff with back in the day was kind of up here near these lilies. That might have gone in the lily. Let's see if that will still work. Um, we used to catch a lot of stuff up there. Now it's been a long time. So we'll give it a try. But And then I think just putting the, uh, the, the, the telescopic rod out here and we'll do 1.25 and see if this still sits properly yeah we're good we've got maggots on we could also try blood worms um we'll kind of rotate through rotate through and test some things so that's a good sign right here in this little two meter hole getting a pretty quick bite here on the on the pearl barley and this is going to be just like, um, oh, and that's a silver bream. Now, if there's those fish here, then this is the spot. You know what I mean? Like, if we're going to catch silver bream mixed in with everything else uh, and can get some markers that way, that would be awesome. We'll see. But this is going to remind you more. Fishing in the pond, you don't have the current. Lots of gibbles and crucians and roaches and perch and that kind of stuff. So it's going to remind you more of, when you first start out fishing at Mosquito. But again, we still have the very first level of gear. So it just may not be efficient enough for us to spend a lot of time just trying to pull in fish that are, are much bigger than this. So we'll try it out. And then the other thing we can do is give our um, 50-50 on what's going to break here if we catch too big of a fish. So was this the right one? Or was it supposed to be? I don't know. It's fine. We could totally break that rod or that reel with the current setup we have. They're just out of stock of the stuff we would need to do it any other way. I think we've got a bite coming on both of these rods here. All right, let's see if this is another, um, okay, that's bleak. common roach let's try something let's just put bread we have 470 pieces of bread we probably ought to be fishing with bread some let's put uh bread over there and see if, if if it's a pretty quick bite rate on just like the crucian and gibble stuff oh wow okay don't mind seeing common roach here we almost cast that out of the hole, I think. Yeah, let's go to uh, worms here. See if we can't increase the bite rate. We'll go to 150 meters. Sorry, 1.5 meters. <laughs> Not 150 meters. All right, fish on. Do we still have this as pearl barley? Yeah, we. It, it, you could you could argue that we should just have. There's a Chinese sleeper. You could argue that we should just have pearl barley on both feeders right in this hole because we're getting really fast bite rates. Again, the only thing is the the marker to non-marker ratio that has continued to be, have been frustrating here. Um, this session, we're just getting a lot of non-markers, and we don't have. 
you know, that small of hooks on. This is a 15. I believe this one's a 13. Yeah, that's right. So, you know. Now, this one's small, but we're trying to protect our telescopic rod. It's a very, very weak rig here. So, um, we know we're going to catch small stuff on this, but the other two, just so many non markers. So many non markers. And it won't be too long till we switch everything over to rough. Um, once we're, but the bite slow down on the other other baits, we'll put worms on and just try to catch rough all night in this spot. Actually, I'm not going to pick up the shovel. It was when I picked up the shovel in the first video that the game glitched. So until until the server, everything seems completely stable again, we're going to be careful about that stuff. Bunch of junk so far, huh? Um, let's go ahead and switch to worm. That's a night wh nice white bream. That's the first nice, nice, real nice fish we've had in a while here. This seems like a solid fish. Oh, it's a rough. Okay. Uh, that was on 15 hook. I think it's fine. We'll keep going with 15 hook. And before we lose the chance here, let's... Um, these things will stop biting here. Alright, let's try... 
try some spinning, see if we can get a bite on our steel leader. I don't know how a, a big steel leader like that will impact the bite rate. It's a really dirty, I mean, you know, it's a dark, muddy river here in the pond area or in the main river. You wouldn't think it would make a big deal, but all I know for sure is if something breaks on this, it's not going to be the, <laughs> the leader. The only thing this leader is doing is trying to protect us from pike. Which that's the first pike we've caught in however many casts we've had, so it might be a little bit of an overreaction. I mean, it just, you know, it cost us one lure there and one leader. Um, not that expensive. So we probably could have uh, just replaced it and kept going and not put a steel leader on. But steel leader is the only way to be able to successfully protect yourself with uh, from pike bite. Especially with the cheaper stuff. I think the more expensive gear, whether we're talking about line or the even the nicer leaders, even the non-steel ones have a better chance of, of surviving that pike bite. Of course, it can still happen. Um, people definitely at high level still lose lures to pikes when they're not using steel leaders. But I feel like it happens a lot more on the, on the cheaper gear and whatnot. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch this over to worms. This is fully embrace rough time here. And we're going to go down to a uh, really small hook to get this, as much of a bite rate as we can get on the rough. And we'll switch back to telescopic rod as well in just a moment. So I'm not necessarily blaming it on the leader because we would need a lot more testing to, to prove that. But, and the other, the other variable is, this is the first time I fished in the pond uh, on this account, spin fishing. So it's hard to compare it to the main river. Um, but I know in the past I've definitely caught perch and other predator fish in this pond. I mean, I think they are here. So it may be that this bigger leader, being a steel leader, is impacting our... Well, I'll tell you one thing we can do. One thing we can do is this. Just take it off. Let's try it again. This doesn't necessarily prove anything either way, but it's just more data to collect. I just don't think we're going to catch anything right now on the spinner. It's late in the day, too, so. Okay. We probably have a rough on one or both of these. I don't remember which, if I said this before the video cut out earlier or if 
this is something I've already said on the re-recording of it, but the, um, I'm just going to recast this. Something weird happened there. But one of the nice things about going for rough here, and I've caught donut, donuts rough in the main river, never in the pond, but I know that other people have caught them in the pond. Yeah, this is strange. Something's kind of weird happening here. But um, you have a big upside on going for rough. If you get lucky on the donuts, they're just, you know, of course the marker ones especially are just worth a lot of silver, really good XP. Now they're rare, they don't come out a ton, but when they do, you're in pretty good shape with that. It's also just a fish that you get decent silver for. Um, let's just look at weekly donuts here. Yeah, worms, red worms, maggots, blood worms. That pretty much sums it up there. Pretty much sums it up there. What's the absolute? Am I still in the absolute list? Yeah, we're still number one on the absolutes. For the donuts. With the bite rate we're getting on telescopic rod, it makes me think that it might be better if you have two nice, not nice, but like, if you have two regular telescopic rods, I wouldn't do the bamboo rod. For me, the bamboo rod, just it's just not worth it. But if you have two fairly decent rods, it might be worth um, just having one feeder in here for rough and uh, then going with the two telescopic rods. We're getting a little bit, at least, you know, here recently, we've been getting a little bit faster bite rate with the telescopic. So pretty quickly here, we've caught five rough. Three of them are markers. Not bad, considering the marker rate of other fish we've been catching this session. How cool would it be to see a donuts come out? Pretty cool. Oh. Probably should have let that sit.
slow down a little bit here. Let's check our feeder rods. I can't wait till we just have like oodles of uh, <laughs> oodles of silver here so that I can justify buying a uh, camping lantern. I'm very spoiled, used to fishing with a little more light than this overnight. What is interesting is that we are catching on the feeder white bream here all of a sudden instead of the instead of the rough. This time of night it's usually all rough in this spot, which I'm okay with some white bream, but That's what you expect to see more of on the worms is the sleepers. Sleepers and rough. They dominate the waters this time of night.
It's gonna be a sleeper. Let it be a marker, I guess. Still getting this nibble going, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, it's a little on the warm side. I, I'm just not sure. I feel like this has been a little slower session. Total number of fish, I get, you know, we've done okay, 42. But uh, the percentage of markers, oh, that was a white bream. Percentage of markers have been really slow. I mean, we've been leveling up our skills. We've had some excitement. Pike came and snapped our spinning line. But we're not making much silver. Um, we still got some work to do to figure out how to make a little more silver in this, uh, in this spot or on this, on this body of water, not had the best session, but it's just about making that progress. Um, we can a little more aggressively, that's a nice white bream. We can a little more aggressively go after the, uh, the bream once we have upgraded our feeder feeders, at least one of them. And, uh, and that'll help, but, you know, I've had some really good sessions at winding across my accounts, but it's not always great. It's true of any body of water. There certainly are hotter days and in, in terms of streaks of catching good fish and then slower days as well. Sometimes it does seem to correlate with the weather, but not always. We've got about a quarter of the level into 11 today. Um, so if we'd caught a lot more markers, we would have made a lot more progress towards 12 probably, but uh, it hasn't been bad. You know, if you're playing for a while and you see winding is this slow, this, is, this would be a good time to go back to Mosquito. See what the cafe orders are. Try out mosquito for a while. I wouldn't just sit at a body of water if it's uh, if you feel like it's subpar fishing compared to what it can be. Oh, those fake bites, trying to trick us.
to catch the normal um, amount of, oh wow, that's a 1.11 silver order. Uh, the normal amount of gibble and common roaches and stuff that I would expect. Um, 26 silver. A little less than an hour of fishing. Very slow. Very slow. Now we are up to 103 silver. Just to make this uh, the end of this, let's just refresh on what we're saving for here. Not that, although that would be interesting. Um, this is what we're saving for. So, uh, you know, one more session, we should be able to afford the rod. And then we need a little bit more time to get up to the, to the reel. Okay, so, sorry, it's been a little slower, but it, that's the way it goes. Like, we want to be realistic about what the experience can be like. Sometimes it's a little slower. Uh, I think the hard part for me today was just the problems that they're having with the server. And this is certainly not common. It's happened before, but not very often. Um, but it's a little frustrating. Glad we got the fish sold before anything else happened. So, as always, thanks for watching. I think I said this uh, in the part of the video that got deleted because of the... Um, the glitch and stuff that happened but uh this may be the last episode before my vacation uh at some point in the next couple days you'll see that uh i stopped making videos for about a week and uh, then we'll be back so i probably will get at least one one or two more videos done i just don't know if it'll be in this series or with something else but uh, as always thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time